mastering physics. Um, I have to set that up, I think. Um, but what uh, it comes free if you bought the textbook, I believe. Or maybe if you bought a certain level of the textbook, it comes free. And if you bought a different level, it doesn't. But anyway, the way I, um, I do it here is um, I make it optional. Okay, so I'm going to list some assignments there. And at the end of the quarter, if you don't do them, I'll calculate your grade out of, I forgot how many points, 700 and... 25, <laughs> and if you do the, uh, the optional online homework and it helps you, I'll calculate, I'll add the 75 points in for the homework, whatever you get out of the homework, and, and take your score out of 80, 800 points. So, you know, if you, if you calculate it out, it's not going to, the actual points from the homework can't help you very much, you know, but the fact that you did it and maybe it helps you understand things will boost your other scores, right? So... So if you have it, you know, and you want to try it out and do a couple of chapters and see if you like it, um, it's probably worth doing. If you don't like it, you can stop. If, uh, if you don't have it, yeah, I don't know. It's probably not worth buying it, okay? So you can, it's optional here. If it helps you, great. If not, um, don't worry about it. There are plenty of other things to look at. Uh, let's see. While I've got this open, um, uh, our textbook... Uh, Walker, somebody have that there? You want to just hold that up real quick? Thank you. Walker, fourth edition, right? Or uh, you can get the online version. Uh, you can even use another textbook. I don't care. But I'm posting the, they're all the same, right? They're all the physics textbooks are about the same. But I've posted, you know, homework problems out of this textbook, and I'll probably pick, you know, the quizzes, base the quizzes loosely on those homework problems. So, you know, if you want to use that exact textbook, that's fine. That maybe you'll feel more comfortable with that. Do you need to bring the textbook to your lab or class? No. <clears throat> okay. Uh, then this other book, uh, Newtonian Tippers. So, physicists love to test things, right? And about 30 years ago, some physicists decided to test how well we teach physics. And what they found was that we don't do a very good job teaching physics. So that's the, the short answer. <clears throat> um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One is the material. Okay, the material, because unfortunately, we all have... Uh, uh, experience in the real world, right? You, you don't come into a physics class and say, well, I've never had physics, so I don't know anything. You're just, I'm starting with a blank slate. I wish you were starting with a blank slate. I could just teach you the right way to think about things, and it would be easy. But you've got a lot of ideas about how the world works because you've lived in it for, whatever, 20 years or whatever, and you've got these ideas set, and it's hard to overcome those. So, I mean, an example is that, you know, way back when, when they were formulating these ideas, we were stuck the wrong way thinking about how motion works because when you push on something, it eventually comes to rest, right? And so people couldn't get past that. They, they thought that things had this natural state that they wanted to be in, either at rest or, or moving one or the other, and, and they wanted to be in this natural state. And finally, after uh, it was in the 1500s, Galileo said, no, no, it's things, things want to stay the way they are. If they're at rest, they want to stay at rest. If they're moving, they want to stay moving. And they only come to rest because something pushes on them and makes them come to rest, like friction and air resistance, right? <clears throat> and once, once he said that, boom, all kinds of advances took place over the next few hundred years. So, so if, you're, if your foundation's wrong, you can't build on it. Everything's wrong, right? <clears throat> the, um, and, and it even happens to me sometimes, right? I get up here, I teach this stuff all the time. I like to tell this story. I was standing next to a frozen lake a couple of winters ago, and I picked up a piece of ice, and I just chucked it across the lake, and it just kept going, 
and going and going. And I was shocked by this. I should have expected that, right? There's hardly any friction. Ice on ice is almost no friction. The laws of physics tell us it's going to keep going forever if no force acts against it. And yet I was surprised to see it just keep going and going and going. And I stand up here and teach this every quarter. So, so you've got to get past those things right? when you take this class. It's, it's, it's not easy. So part of it is the material. Right? It's, it's hard to overcome some of our, our preconceptions right, about how the world works. And so some of these are specifically designed to get past those sticking points. And part of it is the way we teach the environment, right? The, the big lecture hall where the, somebody's writing on the board and the students are taking notes. And I think somebody once, uh, once defined this for me, and I never forgot it, the definition of a lecture. Information passing from the notes of the lecturer to the notes of the student without passing through the minds of either one of them. Right? That's what we're trying to avoid here, okay? I don't want to just be in, in lecture mode, just blindly putting stuff on the board, and you don't want to be in, in note-taking mode, just blindly writing stuff down. We want to be thinking about things, engage a little bit. So we'll try to, you know, I'll have you turn to your neighbor and talk about something. Because when I say something, you're already programmed to kind of not think about it, right? You think, oh, this guy's the expert. I can, I can just take it for granted. But when your neighbor tells you something, you, you turn to your neighbor and you say, why do you think this is the way it is? You know, you're not, you're going to question them. You're going to think, what the hell does this guy know about physics? I better think about this. Is that right? Hmm, does that make sense what he's saying to me? Now all of a sudden you're engaged and you're getting something out of the lecture. And so we'll try to do that as much as we can because it, um, you know, that when we're all together, that's the best use of our time, right, is engaging and having those discussions. And so this book is important. We'll use it a lot. You know, I'll just say, you know, flip open to whatever page and, you know, we'll, I'll let you work on it for yourself for a few minutes and I'll say turn to your neighbor, come to some consensus and we'll talk about it and move on to the next thing. It does slow us down a little bit, but um, it's, it's quality time, right? We want to stress that. Uh, all right, so we'll do three exams and a final um, what I, and weekly quizzes, basically. And the way I'll do it, I'll, I'll drop one of the weekly quizzes in determining your overall grade, and I'll substitute your final exam score for one of your three midterm exams if it helps you. Okay, so you have an off day, you're sick, you have a flat tire on the way, you just go blank on one exam, you can replace that score with your final exam score if it helps you. Yes, question. Yeah, please bring this one to class. We'll, we'll use it every day. Okay. All right. Uh, I think that about covers it, right? Okay. So this is online. You can check it out. It's uh, <clears throat> our calendar. I've got some uh, important dates in there. Uh, let's try to hit. The first exam during the third week, that's uh, October 10th. And then um, two weeks after that, we'll hit the second exam. And three weeks after that, the third exam. I've got them all on Wednesdays because I don't like giving an exam on a Monday when you can't like come in and see me the day before, that kind of thing. I think it's just a little easier this way. You can find me on Tuesday or Wednesday morning or know, whenever to get that last minute help before the exam. So, um, so that's why they're all on Wednesdays. Uh, and we'll try, you know, this is subject to change, but we'll try to stick to this as much as we can. I believe this is correct. I hope somebody will double check for me, but our final exam is actually on the Friday of finals week. Um, so we'll have a regular class on, on December 10th, and then finals week starts on Tuesday the 11th. And ours is on Friday of that week. Um, so hopefully someone will double check that, but that's, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's it. Okay, so you know, these are just some things there to, to help you in your, in your planning. And Oh, formula sheet. I hate memorization. Okay? It's 
probably why I'm in physics and not in chemistry or some other field, although your chemistry instructor might not agree with that statement. But um, what I've got here is a formula sheet for you guys to use. And what you should probably do is print it out and become intimate with it. Okay? Use it when you do your homework. Use it when you're studying. Because if the first time you see it is when you come in to take the exam, it probably isn't going to help you that much. Right? So it's there. Print it out. Use it. It's organized reasonably well. I think the notation is pretty close to what's in your book. I won't guarantee that, but I, th I think so. Um, so anyway, it's two pages, um, and you will get this with your exam when you come in for your exam. And it's got the whole quarter on it. So I used to try to give like bits and pieces. I'd give you just what you needed for exam one, but then on exam two, if I just gave you what you needed for exam two, sometimes somebody would want to use something from exam one. Anyway, it's got everything on it. You'll get this formula sheet with each of your exams and with the final, so become familiar with it. Okay? You don't have to bring it with you. It'll be, it'll be, on the, it'll be the first page on the exam when you come in. All right. Uh, does that cover our... Oh, uh, you can ignore my labs here because um, I'm not teaching the labs for this class. So see your lab instructor about which labs you're doing. Yeah. Oh, the quizzes. That's a good question. Uh, on the quiz, I'll probably just paste a few formulas on the back side of the quiz. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. You can let me know if, you're, if we're missing something.